Well, it is the hug and kiss on the cheek that has some in Washington a little worried. Could House Speaker Nancy Pelosi have transmitted COVID-19 to President Biden, social distancing no longer being observed in so many circles, but Pelosi and other Washington politicians and members of the Biden administration have recently come down with COVID. And add to that, Broadway actors, including Sarah Jessica Parker, Matthew Broderick, their play has been shut down. So I want to bring in Dr. David Winter from Baylor Scott and White Health, uh, who can explain more about, Dr. Winter, is this another start of a surge that we might be seeing? Well, Sonia, we're certainly seeing more cases. I've seen a lot more cases in my own patients these last two weeks. What we're not seeing is the rapid increase we saw with the original Omicron. We're not seeing those surges like they're reporting in China and other countries overseas. And fortunately, we're not seeing a lot of increase in hospitalizations, but still cases are on the rise. So right now, I think we should be careful out there, particularly if you're a vulnerable patient, more likely to get sick, you should be very careful right now because cases are on the rise. So, Dr. Winter, are these cases being sequenced or can we assume that these uh, illnesses are all the new Omicron variant, this BA2? Yeah, most all of them are, Sonia. 75% and rising every week, it's a bigger percentage. So, Omicron BA2, the new variant, it's clearly the most contagious one yet. That's why it's winning out there in the, in the populace right now. Fortunately, we're not seeing it cause more serious illness we're not seeing it cause more deaths, at least this, this far, but it's out there and we need to be careful. The other good news is the vaccines do tend to work against this. So vaccines are good for this new variant also, Sonia. Uh, and Dr. Winter, this past week, another monoclonal antibody was taken off the market by the FDA. There was a lot of hope when we started hearing about these, uh, but if we become ill with COVID, depending on who we are, of course, what should we be doing? Yeah, first let me point out that most all patients that get COVID right now have mild cases. That's fortunate. And for that, you can just stay home, rest, drink lots of fluids, you can take over-the-counter cough medicines or anti-inflammatory medications for symptoms if you need that. We're not seeing the serious cases, but if you do have a serious case or if you come down with COVID and you're susceptible to be getting a serious case, there's new pills out by, by Pfizer called Paxlovid. It's a five-day course. They're Hard to find right now, but they're out there and they do make a big difference. But the monoclonal antibodies don't work on this new variant, so we're not using that. One other outpatient drug we can use is remdesivir. That's an antiviral drug used in the hospital. You can get it in a series of three shots, three days in a row in the emergency room. So that's a little bit of a hassle. And we're not, fortunately, having to give very much that out because we're not seeing that many serious cases right now. So fortunately, we're doing pretty well. Paxlovid is the one big thing right now that we do use more and more. Uh, and with regard to testing, Dr. Winter, let's say you get a positive test. At what point do you think it's safe to go back to work and sort of your regular functions, even if that test is still coming back positive after, let's say, a week or a week and a half, even two weeks? Yeah, if you have a mild case and your symptoms are gone or just about gone in five days, the CDC says you can go back to work. You should not be contagious. Testing can be kind of risky because you may not be contagious, but that sometimes that test stays positive for a while. So we don't always do testing. If your symptoms are gone, it wouldn't hurt to wear a mask for another week or so anyway. In fact, they're recommending if you go back and get out in public after five days and your symptoms are gone, you might wear a mask for another five days just to be careful there. We want to stop the spread of this thing. So just use some common sense. It's going to increase. We have to learn, I think, just to deal with this, Sonia, because it's going to be around, I think, for a long, long time. Fortunately, right now, it's mild. Most folks aren't getting that sick. We have to worry about the transmission of the foes who are susceptible. Those are very vulnerable. Yeah, that is the good news. There's a little bit of a silver lining. And uh, finally, Dr. Winter, about this second booster shot. I know some people have already gotten them. How good is it uh, with regard to the data? And for those people who are eligible, if they're like, well, when should I get this? What are you saying? Yeah, it's, it's a good a booster shot. It does work, especially being pushed for those who are very susceptible to getting real sick. But for the rest of folks, age 50 and over, you can get it. Now, timing might be something you want to consider. A recent study out of Israel found that after eight weeks, the efficacy declined. Your protection declined then. So you might want to think about timing. For example, if this summer you're going to go overseas, or if you're going to be in an area in this country where there may be high risk of transmission, you might want to time that second booster, get it maybe two weeks before. That'd be the ideal time. 
before you get in those vulnerable areas. So think about timing. It's a good vaccine. No downside about getting this at all. So I think we ought to use more and more of it at the right time for the right person. Yeah, timing is everything. All right, Dr. Winter, thank you so much as always.